Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're going to talk about the three best baits for June bass fishing. Spawn is finally wrapping up here in the northeast. Uh, some places it's probably still just starting a little further northeast than me, um, but towards the end of June these things will start playing. In the next couple weeks here in Pennsylvania these baits are going to start playing. So let's go ahead and break them down with number one being a deep crankbait. So this box right here, this is the one that I'm going to stick with up here in the northeast. If you are further south and you are still fishing a deep crankbait, go with the bigger models here. So this is the Six Sense C series. I have every one, the C6, 10, 15, 20, and 25. Those basically kind of indicate how deep they're gonna go. Um, I will fish all of them. In Pennsylvania and this area in the Northeast, our fish don't get to 20 or 25 foot of water. They stand, tend to stay a little bit shallower, but still offshore in that eight to 15 foot range. So that's where this box is gonna come in. That's gonna get me that eight to 15 foot range and I'm gonna have the crankbaits to do it. So when it comes to actually selecting a crankbait, you have the C6, C10, C15, depending on how deep those fish are gonna be. Sometimes I'll have two or three on at a day. Uh, the C10 or the C6 is gonna get you that six to eight foot range. If they're deeper than eight foot, if you're looking in that 10 to 12, you're gonna to wanna to go with the C10. And then if you're really looking at fish that are getting down there in like 12 to 15, 16 foot of water, that's when you're gonna to need to go with the C15. You want your crankbait to run a foot or two deeper than the bottom that you're actually fishing. And I'll always run these on 12 pound test straight fluorocarbon to make sure I get the maximum amount of depth out of the bait itself. Um, if you needed a bigger profile bait when wanted it to go shallower, you could take this C15 and put it on 17 pound test and it's only gonna go like 10 to 12 foot and you'll be able to keep it in that strike zone in that shallower water and it's a much bigger crankbait than the c10 is um, so that's how i break down actually choosing the size of crankbait and then when it comes to colors i mean it's pretty much two colors for me this time of year those fish are going to be feeding on shad and bluegill and stuff like that so bait fish colors is what i'm going to throw whether it's a white and some cleaner water something with a white base coat or something with a chartreuse base coat and a little bit dirtier or stained water. Also, the deeper that you fish, you'll notice that a lot of my baits, the C6s are in that shad pattern, and a lot of my C10s and especially my C15s or even deeper, I don't have the other box in here right now, those ones mostly relate to the brighter colors, whether it's just a pop color in the back like this green and yellow on this citrus shad or the whole bait is chartreuse. As you get deeper in the water, you lose light penetration. So that bait kind of just turns gray anyway down that deep um, and it really doesn't look the same, but a little bit more pop and color as you fish deeper with your crankbait will get you some more bites. Um, but stick to your shad patterns, Make sure you pick a crankbait that goes a foot or two deeper than what you're fishing and you'll be good to go. You can cover a lot of water, fish those offshore places and find those bass fast. My second bait right here is going to be a follow up on those same places uh, when those fish really don't wanna eat, when they're being tough, difficult. And this one is one that will work no matter what species of bass you're fishing for or how many baits those fish have seen. Uh, and there's two ways to rig it up. This is going to be a drop shot. I'm always gonna have a drop shot on from the moment those fish get off bed until like winter. I'll fish it nonstop. It always catches fish. Anytime you have offshore bass, I will always be fishing a drop shot. Um, and it, like I said, it works for all three species of bass. So this one I actually have rigged up for smallmouth bass right now. This is just gonna be a VMC Finesse Nico hook in a size one with a baby Z2 on here. And then I have just a quarter ounce drop shot weight. Uh, that's an open hooked version. So you can do that, um, flat worms, all that kind of stuff. If you're fishing an open hooked version, that's what I'm gonna go with this little size uh, one drop shot hooks. And I'm gonna use those little four inch baits when I'm doing that. Now, the other thing that I've been doing is fishing for bass in brush piles and offshore fish using a drop shot as well. The great thing about a drop shot, it's very snag resistant if you Texas rig it, which is the next technique we're gonna talk about. But it's also very snag resistant on like rocks and stuff like that because it keeps your bait up above the bottom. But you can feel everything down there because you have that sinker. So it allows you to feel on those spots. Sometimes you might not be able to feel everything with a crankbait down there. Um, but if you're trying to learn offshore fishing and what it feels like down there on the bottom, that drop shot will give you some better bottom transition uh, transmission up your rod. You'll be able to feel what it's like down there. If I'm gonna Texas rig it, I'm gonna take that same VMC Finesse Nico hook, but I'm gonna go to a size two watt. And then I'm going to get an entire giant box of robo worms like I have right here. 
These are the six inch robo worms, but I also have some four and a half inch robo worms. Mostly this is geared towards largemouth when I'm fishing in brush piles or offshore places like that. Uh, my main colors, Aaron's Magic, Morning Dawn, anything green pumpkin, and then a bright pink every once in a while. For some reason, they just love it. Um, you'll Texas rig that on there just like you would set up every other Texas rig and you'll have your drop shot weight down below. You'll be able to work it through brush piles without getting hung up and you'll catch a ton of largemouth bass using that technique. It's something you're going to see on the channel a lot over the next three months. Uh, I'm going to be fishing it a ton, showing you how to offshore fish, how to find bass offshore, and especially how to fish that technique and catch bass offshore. So if you're interested in any of that, hit that subscribe button down below so you don't miss that stuff coming up. But if you already have been following my channel and you know that I love this bait so much, get out there and get to throw in that bait. You're going to be catching a ton of bass all summer long with that drop shot, whether you Texas rig it or open hook, depending on the species of fish you're fishing for and where it's at. And the last bait that I throw for June bass fishing and one of my favorites, the reason that I like this one more than the deep crankbait is going to be a Carolina rig, mostly because those fish, they'll see a lot of deep crankbaits. Everybody's gonna throw them out there. And there are times when that catches them. If you find a fresh school of fish that just got offshore, they'll eat a deep crankbait. But once they start seeing a bunch of deep crankbaits, the Carolina rig catches fish time and time again. It does not matter how many baits they've seen, any of that stuff. If you get a Carolina rig in front of those fish down there deep, they will eat the bait. Um, a lot of times I'm throwing just a stick worm on here. So I have a Ned Fry on here right now. Super subtle and finesse bait. It's just like that drop shot. I can fish this on those offshore places. I can feel everything that's down there. It's snag resistant. It's everything that you need it to be for an offshore bait this time of year and it will always get bites because you have a finesse profile bait on there. And the other thing is you can throw different baits on your Carolina rig to make it act different. You can put flukes on there if they're feeding on little bait fish and stuff down there. You can put a bigger brush hog or something to get a bigger bite, um, or you can fish these little straight stick tail worms uh, if you're really fishing for either smaller fish or um, just really tough biting fish at the time. You can do different things with your Carolina rig to get it down there. The other thing with the Carolina rig is that you can use different weight sizes to get your bait down there. So um, I can use all different kinds of weight sizes. My go-to is like a half ounce, uh, but if I'm fishing anything deeper than 15 foot, I'll go up to three quarter or even a one ounce to really maintain bottom contact. And no matter how windy it gets, while it might get windy, can't fish that drop shot and feel it down there, you can just increase your weight size on a Carolina rig and no matter how windy it gets, you can feel that bait on the bottom and still get those bites if those fish are not cooperating. So it's one of my favorites. I'll fish it all summer long. Again, like I said, you're gonna see that drop shot a lot over the next few months. You're gonna see this thing a lot over the next few months just because it catches so many bass and it's such a good technique. Even though it's a very old school technique, it will always catch fish time and time again. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video talking about the best baits for June bass fishing. And if you did and you wanna see how to break down this Carolina rig, how to set it up, how to fish it, everything, I did a super in-depth video about this bait right here. Go and check this one out right here. Hit that subscribe button down below so you don't miss any more of my fishing videos coming up. And thanks for watching.